Welcome to the Gentleman Grichowski Show. We're here on location at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. That's just right in the heart of the Wrigleyville, Lakeview uh, area. And none other than with me is Party Wesley, party time himself. How are yeah. you, my friend? Oh, man, I'm feel feeling awesome. No, it's, it's, it's great to get you out and about because a lot of times I call Party. I say, Party, let's go out. Especially to Harrigan's, he says, you know what? I can't. I'm dieting. I'm dieting. He's not dieting today when we're ready to do this, huh? Oh, yes. I'm in my, and plus, I'm in fantastic shape. Now, the good thing about this, we're celebrating Irish Whiskey Fest with an Irish whiskey uh, uh, tasting here going on here. We also got Guinness Beer. Oh, Representatives yes. from Guinness Beer in the show today and Irish Whiskey uh, con uh, companies from our, all over the world. Or yes. From Ireland, at least, right? Uh, yes. And I love Irish whiskey. Oh, th th those are the only, you only can get it in Ireland. That's a beautiful thing. It's all Irish whiskey, I believe, is made in Ireland, and we can sell it here. But guess what? I was just Googling it. It's the island of Ireland. The island, huh? I didn't know, about, I didn't know it was the island of Ireland, but I just Googled it. Well, what, it's not, what else would it be? It, I guess it would be uh, the land of opportunity. I guess so. <laughs> Irish eyes are smiling. That's for sure. And again, we're sitting here at Harrigan's and Halstead, 2816 North Halstead, for the Irish Whiskey Festival. Oh, Festival. yes. Now, Parti, I noticed, uh, Parti, tell us about the first time you ever had Irish Whiskey. I'm going to tell you what happened. What? We were leaving Second City. Yeah, we were being Parti and I took a class at Second City. And then we went to Second City and did some karaoke. Mm -hmm. And then I, I said, Larry messaged me and said, Parti, won't you, tr won't you just try the uh, Irish Whiskey? You know, you might like it. Yeah, because Irish whiskey is very smooth, goes down. Yes, it does. And, and you just it's, it's a good feeling, right? Good yes. flavor. Get, get, get your, just get you a little buzz, just a little bit. Okay. But tell us about it. So your first time you had Irish whiskey. Yes. I had about, I had two glasses. And oh, my goodness, man. It, it, it was good. It, it settled through the, the moment of the night, and I had a good time. And guess what? Then they kicked me out for doing bad, for my uh, karaoke singing. Well, you're, actually, uh, your karaoke sounded better. At least my karaoke sounded better with you drinking. Debbie, yes. See, now we're talking. There you go. Now, Parti, what else you been up to? Because I know you've been uh, going to the gym a lot lately, right? Yes. Tell us about that. So what I'm doing is I've been learning a lot of things about what I've been eating and also what I have not been eating. Right. So what, we're doing, what I'm doing is now is it's called the no sugar, no carbs diet. No sugar, no carbs. And I, I ain't going to lie to you, Larry. It's the hardest thing you can do in your life. Well, you don't realize a lot of things is made with sugar and has, a lot of things has carbs in it. Man, I couldn't believe my trainer was training me on this. But guess what? I feel better. I'm looking better. And the main thing I'm doing differently now, which I've never done before in my life, I can do one hour on the treadmill now. One hour on the treadmill. I've never done that in my life. That's more than I could do on the treadmill. That's for certain. Yes. When I mean one hour, I mean an hour without taking a break. Without a break. Without a break. One hour straight without a break. Oh, my goodness. On a treadmill. That's wonderful. Oh, man, fantastic. And I feel awesome. That's good. And one place you could feel awesome is Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. And we're here on this episode. is going to be the Irish Whiskey Show. And we're uh, having an Irish Whiskey Fest here. Oh, yes. The Chicago's Irish Whiskey Fest is right here at Harrigan's on Halstead. Yes, indeedy. Now, the good thing about it is, you know what? You get a little taste of some of the different whiskeys from along the world, or at least from Ireland. I wouldn't say the world. It's come from somewhere else. It's the world to me. Right. But, but right. But, but we can say, say Ireland because Ireland's a great, great place, and they got a lot of great, fantastic whiskey that comes from Ireland. Yeah. So those are some great things we're going to be doing in this episode of the Gentleman Grachowski Show with Party Time himself. Party time. A broken clock is only right two times a day. But party time is right 24-7, baby. 24-7. We'll be back with more of the Gentleman Grachowski show after this, so stay tuned. We're here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. This is Irish Whiskey Fest, and um, what more, more can I say? All you can say is party time. Hey, welcome back to the Gentleman Grachowski Show. We're sitting here with Alex Joyce. How are you, my friend? Thank you for having me here. Now, Alex Joyce uh, performs the open mic, uh, it's a comedy showcase here on Tuesday nights, 8.30 p.m. Uh, here at Harrigan's and Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. It's called Pint of Laughs. Yes. It's, and, I'm sorry. It's a great, uh, great open mic. Uh, come, come see the show. And it's a great Irish pub. 
Exactly. Now you've been doing it for uh, for several for for quite a time, some quite some time here. But you also have a uh, show called the Blackout Diaries, right? Yes, the Blackout Diaries uh, show is uh, stand-up comedians uh, telling crazy party drinking stories, and then uh, there's always one non-comedian that tells as well, and then the audience gets to. Uh, Ask questions uh, about the story. Exactly. So it's uh, every Saturday at the Newport Theater at 10 o'clock. That sounds good. Now, uh, one thing that you're also doing is you're promoting your dad. He's an author. Yes. James Joyce. Thank you for asking. Uh, my dad uh, flew helicopters in Vietnam. He wrote a book called Pucker Factor 10. It just it uh, was re Pucker Factor 10. Pucker. It was just uh, released on Audible, uh, but uh, the, the book came out in 2003. And... Uh, but my, my dad's a good storyteller. It's about Vietnam, but it's uh, it's very funny. So you should check out. Uh, it's a good read. Now what uh, he he drew he flew helicopters. You said in, in Vietnam. Yes. What what type of sense of humor do you think he had going into it, or do you think he had a sense of humor coming out of that mission? He's a Southside Chicago guy. Went to Leo High School. Right. Uh, he's he's just got that storyteller, street corner, uh, bar uh, kind of uh, sense of humor. So he took that into Vietnam, and he uh, he took that with him. He, he took it into Vietnam, and he definitely carried out throughout the course of life. It, and he found, you know, a hard time in Vietnam. He was able to find some humor in it, huh? Absolutely, yes. And, and yes. you happen to have one story you can tell us quickly, so people can buy the book uh, Pucker Factor Ten. Pucker Factor Ten. Uh, he, he, I think here's here's the best uh, way to see is that uh, he actually uh, f uh, crashed a helicopter, okay. and uh, there's footage of it on uh, on YouTube. He crashed the helicopter. Yes. Did, did they charge him for it? They. Uh, well, he was in trouble. He was oh, in a little yeah. bit of trouble, but uh, he he crashed it. He uh, flew it into uh, some uh, trees. Okay. And but they were filming a a documentary called the Anderson Platoon. Okay. And they actually have footage of him crashing the helicopter. So, uh, it sounds insane, but it's actually uh, it's true. Wow. Uh, check it out, uh, James Joyce. Bugger Factor 10. Now, one guy I know that never crashes when he's behind the wheels, that's Party Wesley. Party. Party, party time. Come on down here, my friend. What's, what's happening as the governor? Now, Party. That's another you? Leo High School. Yes, Leo High School connection right there. Party, look that way. 1993. There you go. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, man, it's a small world, ain't it? It is a small world. But I got some shock. Also, I got more shocking news for you about Leo. Yeah. Guess who the principal is? Who? My former classmate. Can you believe that? Chaka Rawls. I believe anything now. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of interesting that someone that you were a classmate at uh, Leo High School with yes. happens now to be the principal. That's kind of a cool thing. Now, is it cool? It's so awesome because, man, as we were all coming up, none of our classmates ever would imagine that he would be the future principal. Leo, we would, I mean, we just never even thought so about it. Is he good? You think he's a good principal? Oh, he's not a great guy, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I was going to say, but at that, we don't want no lawsuits. <laughs> he's a great guy. Definitely there. And, and tons of energy. Tons of energy, just like party time. Yes. We should have been the principal. Maybe next time. <laughs> yes, next. Yeah, but he gonna be in. But he he's gonna hold that turn, a position position for a long time. That sounds pretty good. We're here at Harrigan's on Halsted, 2816 North Halsted. We are here with Alex and Joyce, and we're celebrating Irish Whiskey Fest here in the month of uh, March. March March into it right now. Yes. We'll be back with more from the gentleman Grachowski show after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Gentleman Gorchowski Show. We're here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2860 North Halstead. We happen to have Guinness Rep here, Emmy Redmond, to the broadcast. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Tell us about, uh, I'm doing great, and tell us about Guinness. Guinness has a long tradition of uh, being a beer, right? It is. So uh, Guinness actually started in 1759, which is older than America. Long time, yeah. Long time. So Arthur Guinness was actually inherited 100 pounds from his uh, uncle, who was an archbishop. Okay. And he went up the road to Dublin, and he leased St. James's Gate. So St. James's Gate refers to the area of Dublin where, um, where the brewery is. Originally, okay. uh, originally St. James's Gate was one of the main entryways to the city of Dublin okay. during Viking years when it was a uh, The walled, Viking years, yeah. During, like, when it was a walled, fortified city, so right. St. James's Gate. So, and he signed a very, very um, unique lease, and it was for not, it was a hundred pounds down uh, uh, for a thousand or nine thousand years. Nine thousand years. Nine thousand okay. years was the, was the original lease. Oh so wow! The, the reason they honor it today, still, huh? Uh, in a way, yes, in a way. Um, the, the reason for the long lease at that time was uh, the idea was keep Irish land in Irish hands. So right. they would, Irish would lease land to each other for very long periods of time, and that was the story behind it. Now, you said that the man that started Guinness, he was a very um, 
very active with uh, the community, right? He was. He was very philanthropic. Um, so the Guinness family were very, very generous with the local community. They um, they built the Ivy Gardens, which was uh, like they say low income housing. So a lot of the brewery workers did did live in these houses. The, um, they were the first company in all of Europe to offer pensions, okay. offer paid medical and sick leave, and like pre-union, this is really, really unheard of. Right. Um, and during the World Wars, if you were a worker of the brewery and you went and fought in the World Wars, you were um, your wife would be paid your wages while you were away. Okay. If, unfortunately, you didn't return. Your wife would be given your pension and offered uh, supplemental employment. Like okay. They were very. Um, they were also very great to the uh, the Dublin and London zoos. The okay. tip of the hat to the animals that you see in all the drawings. Right. Uh, tell us about um, how Guinness is, is made. How Guinness is made? Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah. Guinness actually, um, so the Guinness we know and love today, which is the Guinness Draft here, uh, which is typically what you see in most pubs, um, actually didn't exist until 1959. Okay. So in 1759, Arthur Guinness started brewing ales. Um, and then he changed it to porters, porters, and then became stouts. Okay. So uh, Guinness, um, Arthur Guinness was very, very forward-thinking, and he wanted to go all over the world. And so he created a foreign export porter that went all over the world. Um, okay. So part of the brewing process um, was a man called Daniel Wheeler, and he basically invented what today was known as a coffee drum roaster. Okay. So it's a way of roasting barley. Before that, what they say what they would do is they would just burn sugar and throw it into the beer to, wow. for the color, which yeah. obviously probably tasted terrible uh, I gotcha. so, so essentially uh, that technology is pretty much the same thing used today so Guinness the Guinness brewery is the largest brewery of its size in the world that roasts its own barley on site every wow. day unbelievable and tell us about the artwork so the artwork was created by an artist called John Gilroy so up until like the 19 1920s uh, Guinness didn't really advertise too much uh, so but times changed and they moved along with the times and they created uh, they created an ad campaign with John Gilroy he was an English artist uh, that created all these drawings. The first one was the pelican, of the bottles right. coming out of his beak, and then it became the toucan, which is pretty much the most synonymous animal that you see in all yeah. the Guinness repertoire. Um, so uh, he took his children to a circus, and he saw a seal balancing a ball on his nose, and he thought, what if that was a pine glass? There and that's go. how it started. So, okay. um, so it's a whole bunch of different languages, hundreds of different drawings, um, and the caricature, uh, the, the zookeeper that keeps losing his beard to all the animals is actually a caricature of himself. Okay, and what do you? Uh, what's your favorite part about Working for Guinness. Uh, <laughs> the part about working for Guinness is I get to, I mean, I get to do this at work. Yeah. You know, I get to go and have a few beers and I get to meet so many different interesting people and, and everybody loves to tell you their stories about right. when I went to Ireland, I did this, or when I went to the brewery, I did this. My favorite pint of Guinness to get is at this place. Like, it's just, it's a very open and friendly beer. People love talking about it. People love, um, love talking about story about Ireland, yeah. And can you tell us a little about this Ripple machine? Yes, so the Ripple Machine uh, was actually created initially for uh, for coffee. So like okay. coffee houses will put their logo on it. So what it is, it's a flavorless malt extract. Okay. And essentially it looks like an inkjet print cartridge and it prints it on line by line. So I can take your picture, which I did, okay. go into the machine. All right. And we'll send it and off it and right see how now. it goes. And there it is, there's the machine going on. You want to get a close up of this mark here. That's cool. So I'm, I'm definitely glad you stopped. Are we able to accommodate us today? Yeah. I know we got a lot busy here with uh, Irish Whiskey Fest here at Harrigan's 2816 North yeah. Halstead. And, and like um, I said, you definitely, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. And we get a close up of this uh, whiskey here, or yeah. this um, <laughs> beer. And if you can't make it to Ireland, we do have a brewery in, uh, we do have a brewery in Baltimore. So if you can find yourself near the Baltimore airport, we do have a, our Guinness Brewery, which is a home of Guinness Blonde. That's my face. All right, thanks for stopping by. Okay, We're at Harrigan's at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2860 North Halstead. And this is Annie Redman, and she's our representative for Guinness and a great beer here. And, and, and believe it or not, Guinness has got fewer calories than most beers, right? Guinness is, well, it's, it's pretty light. It's only 4.2% alcohol, which is the same as, you know, your general American light beers. Um, and it's uh, 126 calories per 12 ounces. So it's relatively, it's not a heavy beer like most people think it is, but yeah. it's relatively light. Right. So. All right, Annie, thanks for stopping by. Thank Cheers. You. There Cheers, you go. Cheers, All right, this is Gentleman Grotowski Show. We're here at Harrigan's at Halstead, 2860 North Halstead. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Gentleman Grachowski Show. We're here at Harrigan's at Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. And I have John Babin here. John Babin is performing here for the uh, Irish Whiskey Fest. Welcome, uh, John. Yes, sir. Chicago Irish Whiskey Fest 2020. It's a uh, good time in here. Uh, it's actually my first time playing at uh, Harrigan's, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So. Well, you just turned 21, right? I did. I did. 
Tell us about your, now you, you got a lot of original songs. Tell us about your um, musical background. Absolutely. Well, uh, I came from a pretty musical family. And um, so I kind of always had music around the house. Uh, okay. A lot of uh, like 60s stuff and 50s stuff, but very well-rounded jazz. But also uh, the Irish uh, folk has always been playing in my house as well. So it's just kind of in my blood to, to be a part of that kind of uh, that kind of culture, in, in, uh, musically speaking. And what do you like about the Irish folk music? It's uh, you know, in, in many ways, it's like early rock and roll. In many ways, it's like early, okay. it's like early punk rock. It's very, it was music that was played outside of uh, the traditional realm, say in uh, uh, churches. It was more like for the for like people who just wanted to go drink and have a good time and have fun in the pub. Okay. And, and uh, wanted to laugh and have a joke and listen to some good music. And so I get that vibe with that music a lot. Like it's very freeing and. Right. And any particular artist you grew up listening to in, in the Irish uh, side? The Clancy Brothers, Tommy Makem. I think Liam Clancy is probably the greatest Irish balladeer, or greatest balladeer he's probably ever walked the planet. So okay. I would go with uh, Liam Clancy as far as that, yeah. And then you listen into the music around the house. You said you were uh, 50s, 60s music. Yes. Growing up. What type of uh, uh, bands or uh, performers inter, uh, influenced you? Well, the Beatles are number one. Of course. The Beatles are number one. They clinch, You know how like a uh, baseball team clinches first? Well, the Sox clinch first. Excuse me. The uh, <laughs> the Beatles clinch first. Okay. And uh, so you know it's uh, they're they're just a uh, you know a huge influence on me in my life. The Stones, The Doors, Dylan, um, Simon and Garfunkel, bands of that nature. Okay. Uh, those are obviously earlier earlier bands. Anything growing up after you know in a later t part of your days? Absolutely. Uh, the Laws from Liverpool, uh, Oasis from Manchester. Um, and uh, right now I'm just listening to some new stuff that's coming out on the radio. There's a lot of great bands out there right now that, uh, and not just on the radio, but on Spotify. With the Spotify, there's a, a plethora of uh, musicians you can find. So there's a, a lot of good stuff coming out right now. And you're too. on Spotify too, right? I am, Tell actually. Tell us about your Spotify account. Sure. Um, you can find us at, uh, you can find my full band at Lever, L-E-V-E-R. We're on Spotify. We just re released a new album uh, early on in the past year called Dows. And we're coming up with some music videos for it. Some of the songs uh, you'll hear that you heard me play today uh, will be there as well, uh, full okay. band style. And uh, I also have some solo work on there as well, here and there. So. And then how would you describe your music? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. Rock and roll never never forgets and never dies, right? Never going to die. And As long you, as we're alive, not happening. There you go. And when you write a song, because you do a lot of original stuff too, right? Absolutely, yeah. What, what do you... What, what contributes to your songwriting? What do you uh, What do you get your inspiration for to write a song? Whiskey, beer. Yeah. It's about it. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. No, but really, I, I heard some of the original songs, and you're going to hear a couple songs later on from you, original. They're very um, they're upbeat and, and friendly songs. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like to keep it upbeat, even if we're sometimes you're singing about a sad topic or something. It's good to have like kind of an uplifting, almost even humorous thing about it. So. Uh, you know, we, we everyone has a everyone has a smile on their face at the end of the day. Exactly, and we can find out more about you. Uh, sure, I'm on Facebook. You can find me John Babin, B A B I N, John No H. Uh, that's where I pretty much update most of my people where uh, where all my shows are coming. So feel free to send me a request, and um, and we'll uh, I'll keep you updated. Cool. And uh, we'll be more uh, back with more after this at the Gentleman Gruchowski Show. We're here at Harrigans and Halstead, 20. Uh, you know where we're at, 2816 North Halstead. And we're gonna hear a John Babman's original song coming up after this, so don't go away. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is John Babin, and um, I'm playing some music here today at Harrigan's on Halstead, Harrigan's Hooligans. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to play your original song called Don't Feel Alone, and you can find it on Spotify under my band name, Lever. If, if I had a dollar but every time my mind just took a ride, you started sailing off the sea. Yeah. With every single collar. Pulling on my neck just like a Rex, squeezing that lap right out of me. If I had a brain freeze 
for everyone I run from taking off, I see up to eventually. Don't be alone. Don't be Don't be alone 